uh, Shalom. I pray everybody's having a fantastic, beautiful day like I am. Today I'm going to uh, go over a little short lesson uncovering Hebrew roots. And the, the backstory on this lesson is um, Christ and all the apostles, when they speak of uh, script, scripture or quoting scripture, they're quoting from the Old Testament. There was no New Testament when Christ and the apostles were uh, preaching and when they were teaching. So when you hear uh, a reference to scripture, like all scripture is a uh, good doctrine and, and no scripture is uh, over to private interpretation. These scriptures or, or, or these reference to scriptures are referring to the Torah or the Tanakh. It's not referring to the New Testament. Second thing to keep in mind is the entire Old Testament has one central theme. And that theme is the nation of Israel or the Hebrew Israelites being taken into captivity for disobedience, for breaking the laws and statutes commandments. And then a prophesied Messiah save or Savior coming to restore the Israelites into their physical kingdom and also to restore their spiritual state with the Most High. Now, poor doctrine has spread throughout centuries now and many false teachers continue to put these prophecies on every body in every nation and now teach that it no longer matters who's a physical Israelite or who's physical Jacob because Christ shed his blood for all. Christ has redeemed all men into one unified nation. And um, that type of false doctrine, it sells many tickets, it fills many churches, and it makes many people warm and fuzzy inside. But the only problem with that false doctrine is it doesn't match scripture. So we're going to go over some uh, scriptures. We're going to call to the to the stand some some witnesses to see if this false doctrine match what we have in scripture. And the first witness we're going to call to the stand can be found in the chapter in the book of Acts, uh, chapter one, verse six. It says, when they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, Will thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? So this is the New Testament book of Acts. And the disciples who have finally believed that this man is the Messiah. This man is sent from the Most High. He is the Redeemer that Israel has been looking for. They're asking him, Father, teacher, rabbi, are you going to restore to us the kingdom now at this time? So... How did these disciples know that once this Messiah came, his job was to restore the kingdom to Israel? Now, before we go over more witnesses, I want to point out at no time did they mention a spiritual uh, kingdom or did they mention uh, being restored to spiritual Israel or spiritual converts? They are asking, is he going to restore the physical kingdom? that's now being ruled by the Romans to the rightful owners, the Israelites. So that's our first precept. Now we're going to move on to our, our second witness. And this is found in the book of Luke, chapter four, verse 14. It says, and Jesus returned in the power of the spirit into Galilee. Now, real quick, if you don't know the Hebrew history, these little details just gloss over or, be, or get glossed over or glazed over but when it says he was in Galilee you got to keep in mind who was in Galilee by the sea of Galilee were scattered Israelites it was the scattered 10 tribes who were now being called Gentiles that's where he was around he was around the 10 northern tribes or northern Israel who are now being referred to as Gentiles so that's where we at right Drop down to Luke 4 and 17, it says, And there was delivered unto him the book of, of Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. So Christ reads from the Isaiah scroll. It says, verse 18, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. 
He has sent me to heal the broken hearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering the sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised. 19. To preach the acceptable year of the Most High. Now, false doctrine and false teachers have taken this scripture and made it something spiritual. Christ came to heal the spiritually blind, the, the spiritual captives of, you know, people who are captives of sin, captives, uh, captives of lust. And that's beautiful teaching. That makes everybody feel warm and fuzzy. But if you notice, he quoted Isaiah. Now, again, Isaiah is the Old Testament. Isaiah is part of the Torah or the Tanakh. And the whole theme of the Torah or Tanakh is only about the Israelites. So let's dive deeper into a couple of these uh, adjectives he used uh, when he quoted Isaiah. He says, he anointed me to recover the sight of the blind. So let's get it in Isaiah 61. Isaiah 61 verse 1. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Most High and the day of vengeance of our power to comfort all that mourn. Now, Christ didn't finish all of the scriptures from Isaiah. But if you go to Isaiah 61 and you pick up where Christ left off at, verse 3, you get who he was referring to. You get the subject of his quote. Verse 3, Isaiah 61 and 3 says, To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. If you're not familiar with the Old Testament or the Hebrew history, or I should say Israelite history, because not every Hebrew is an Israelite. You have the sons of, of, of Abraham, all Hebrews. So you've got Ishmael, he's a Hebrew. You have Esau, he's a Hebrew. But Esau and Ishmael are not Israelites. So when he mentions to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, the only ones of Abraham's sons who were in Zion are the Israelites, are the sons of Jacob. So now we could put precept upon precept and we know who Christ is talking to when he quotes that scripture in the book of Luke. Poor doctrine has put this on everybody, every spiritually broken hearted, every spiritual, spiritually cap, cap, uh, captive. But this doctrine doesn't make sense when you get the history of the book. So let's call some more witnesses. So let's get some more details about this people who are blind. So if you go over to the book of Isaiah, chapter 42, I'm going to start at the 16th verse. This is Isaiah 42 and 16. And Isaiah prophesies, he says, I will and I will bring the blind by a way that they knew not. I will lead them in paths that they have not known. I will make darkness light before them. And crooked things straight. These things will I do unto them and not forsake them. Then he goes down uh, verse 18. Hear ye deaf and look ye blind that ye may see. Verse 19. Who is blind but my servant or deaf as my messenger that I sent? Who is blind as he that is perfect and blind as the Lord's servant? So the question is, who is blind but the Lord's servant? Who is the Lord's servant other than the house of Israel, the 12 tribes of Jacob? When you put precept upon precept, you get the understanding of the New Testament. Too many strangers who are strangers to the Hebrew customs and too many false teachers and, and, and too much uh, hooping and hollering causes the history to be missed and this false doctrine continues to be spread and salvation is lost. People think they have salvation, but they don't have salvation because the precepts behind their lessons are lost. 